Good morning, everybody. January the 28th, day 21. You made it. Yeah, way to go. Uh, here we are, final day of 21 days of prayer and fasting. Good morning, Miss Mary. You're the first one on the on my screen this morning. Good to see you this morning. Uh, David Fail, uh, good to see you the other night in your uh, daily environment. Um, so praying for you guys as you do what you do. Appreciate that so much. Um, we'll see you there, the Lynches, Miss Brown, Josh, Diana, man, so many of you guys, so, so grateful for so many of you who have been so faithful and being a part of this with us. Good morning, Miss Jean. Good to see you this morning. George Black, morning. Good to see you, sir. Um, but I'm so, so grateful for so many of you that really participated with us in this 21 days of, of prayer and fasting. And uh, morning, Miss Beth. Uh, glad to see you as well. Um, Miss Judy, uh, and Julie, good to see you as well. Uh, so, so glad to have had this journey and um, would love uh, if any of you have any particular uh, stories, any particular things that you feel like would be pertinent to share about maybe what God said to you or did during these 21 days, we would love to know that. Uh, I would love for you to email me uh, a quick story. I've had a few people email me stories and so appreciated kind of hearing what God said to you and what he did during that time period. And uh, so if you have a minute, would love for you to do that at some point in, in the coming days. Um, but I want to close out today um, our final morning together. And I'm not going to talk about a lot about from this day forward, because actually that's what I'm going to talk about in church today. So uh, today we're going to talk about day 22 and beyond in service today. So I'll talk about that then uh, I really want to pick up with the theme from yesterday and the idea that, you know, oftentimes, and, and this is, maybe I can just talk for Mike for a second. Oftentimes I can pursue things that I would call godly or spiritual or whatever. And really it's a, it's a selfish thing. It's because I want to be better and I want to be this or I want to be that. But, you know, yesterday we really kind of, pulled together the whole concept we've been working on, aligning with the Spirit of God, developing our soul, our mind and our will and our emotions, that they are set on what God would have us, and healing. You know, some of us got to come to a place of healing uh, over our past and the filters that we have, and that really plays into what we're going to talk to today. But then also we talked about uh, sort of decontaminating our body, you know, these things that, that we have... Um, in this world that contaminate uh, us, and, and we've talked about, we talked about debauchery and sexual immorality and, and all kinds of different things that we've talked about. But yesterday we brought together this concept of why, why, why I'll do, do all that. I mean, if, if, if I'm a child of God and I'm going to heaven and I'm good to go, uh, why would I then go through all the pain of going to counseling or trying to heal or dealing with us? And a lot of it Yes, to make your life here on earth better, but it's more about that you would be able to fulfill the mission that God has given you. And that really has everything to do with seeking and searching those who are far from God. And so yesterday we talked about the lost. Now for me, I'll talk about Mike. For me, the lost is probably the easier of what, of, of the two people that, types of people that we're going to talk about. Yesterday we talked about those that are lost. I mean, those that are just, maybe that are just completely unchurched. Uh, those folks, and I have all kinds of compassion for, um, I, I, um, understand, you know, not, have, not having been raised in the church and, and all those kind of things. But today, today's the one that, that I wrestle with personally. And I don't know about you. Um, but that is the ones that maybe we would put in the category of the prodigals. Let's look at our journal real quick in, in the verse, Luke 15 and 10. There is joy before the angel of God over one sinner who repents. It's easy to say amen to that one, uh, right? And, and a lot of that would tie into what we talked about yesterday. But today, we're talking about this in, within the context of a prodigal. Uh, a product, someone who had or knew right and then now has chosen to go away. And how do we deal with that? And how do we respond to that? How do you respond 
to somebody who calls you later this afternoon and says, I know I did A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but um, I want some, I need some help or I want to come home or what, and, and now you are, now we get into a whole nother scenario, at least for me. I don't know about you, but look at Luke 15, 31. So you guys know the story. Um, the son takes half the inheritance, which was rude to ask for in the first place, goes off, squandered it, wild living, parties it up. And then he comes home and the father throws a party for him. And the older son, who's always done the right thing, is like, yo, Holmes, what, what the heck? Are you kidding? And, and, and Luke 15, 31 says, my son, the father said, you're always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. And he was lost and is found. I think there's a number of you that have amazing, amazing mercy. And you hear that and you go, yes, absolutely. Um, man, and you guys are merciful and you're gracious and you'll bring. I think there's also a number of us that feel like the older brother, if we're really honest. Like, well, wait a minute. Like, you know, what what, what the heck? I, one of the things I've been argued with a lot, a lot over the years is, are you serious? Like if there was a serial killer and he's laying there on his deathbed and he accepts Jesus, he gets to go to heaven? Um, and it's a fairness issue in our minds, I think. It's, it's a fairness struggle. You know, it's Jesus tells the story of the workers, right? The workers who worked all day. And then the worker who comes and works the last hour and he pays the same to everybody. And we go, that's not fair, right? And, and, and it's this fair thing that, that struggles, man. I've been a part of prayer meetings for years. Countless times I've heard people pray for the father to bring back prodigals. And uh, of course that would, that would get a whole bunch of amens, right? As a matter of fact, I mean, the whole reason I'm sitting here today is I believe because my mother went to a prayer meeting and they prayed for the prodigals. And uh, two days later, I called and said, Mom, can I get my wife straight? Will you help me? You know, kind of a deal. And she could have said, forget it. Um, and maybe I wouldn't be sitting here today. Uh, so that's a testimony to, to, to my mom and to those that would choose to have mercy. Um, however, man, it, 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 it's, it's kind of this weird place. Like, when is it a hand up and when is it a hand out? Does, does that make sense to anybody this morning? Is Anybody find yourself struggling with, where's the right place? You know, it's one thing to deal with the lost. It's another thing to deal with someone who is chosen to walk away from God that knew better or that grew up in the church or that. And now how do we respond to them? And it's alarming to think that maybe our prayers for the return of the prodigal could be answered by the Lord but that our hearts would be like the older brother. Ugh. Uh, and, and, and in a sense, we end up dishonoring the father in the process. So it should be a very serious thing for us to pray for the prodigals, uh, those who walked away from the faith in Jesus and, and the community of believers. Um, but a sense kind of a heavy responsibility for us to have some wisdom in how do we actually deal with them, right? We can pray Bring them to their senses uh, when they remember the house uh, uh, of the Father and, and help them to remember what's true. But we also ought to look out for them. The scripture says the Father was looking for him because it says when he saw him at a distance, he ran to him. So that brings me to this point this morning. We have to match our prayers with our actions. Um, boy, this one's, this one's a tough one. We can't simply just... Pray for their return, and but we have to look for them. Uh, we have to pray, God, show, show, uh, show me where they are. Uh, if I don't know, where can I find them? Um, you'd be surprised how quickly God will open your eyes if you'll pray that prayer. And so, you guys know how silly pastors are. We like alliteration. Let me give you four words that start with the letter R for alliteration that are described the actions of the, the father in the story. Um, he runs, he receives, he restores, he rejoices. Uh, he runs to the son, 
He receives the son, he restores the son, and he rejoices over the son. Now, I don't mind the running two. If I'm, and it, this is Mike, I'm just talking for a minute. I don't mind the running two. I would be excited to see somebody come back. I, uh, I would, I, I start to get hesitant in the area of receive because I start to go, are they sincere? Is this real? Should I, right? The whole restore, that's where it gets crazy. How many of you know what it means to restore something? If you're going to restore a wall, if I was going to restore a wall in this office and I tore the drywall down, how many of you know you're going to find 15 other issues inside of it? Um, but to get to the place where you can rejoice over them. So man, I want to I wanna push you a little bit this morning to deep dive this one for yourself personally. I have a feeling that uh, just about everybody who will watch this video can at, th at least think of one person that pops into your mind when you think about a prodigal, somebody who used to go to church, somebody who's in your family or not, uh, but that has walked away, that is no longer really walking with God. They're kind of out there doing their thing right now. And, and I wonder what is God's heart for them and what is our role in that, that as God heals my soul, my mind, will, and emotions. What what do I do? Now, now we got to balance, right? Because the mercy folks out there are going, yes, exactly, et cetera, et cetera. But how many of you know that if you do it badly, you're going to get taken advantage of and off they go again in the madness. So there's this discernment scenario that we've got to find, but we've got to have a heart to say, I do want to find that place where we get to rejoice, Right, run, receive, restore, rejoice. And so uh, I wanna push you a little bit this morning just to consider your relationship in that, to be honest with yourself. We, we've been working really hard for three weeks to deal with our spirit, our soul, and, and, and our body. And in this particular area, um, I, I don't know about you, but I have a feeling this is, this is one of the areas where you wrestle as well, uh, again, we can give all kinds of compassion to somebody who's unchurched, but somebody who knows better and chose bad, um, we, we, we wrestle with that one a little bit. And so I want to challenge you as we're closing out 21 days of prayer and fasting to remember, we've been doing three weeks of working on ourselves, but for the purpose of serving others, for the purpose of reaching the lost and restoring the prodigals. Like that is the Great Commission. That is what God has called us to do. Um, and so I, I, I want you to focus today on, okay, God, let me think about the things that you've brought up in my life and the things that you've healed in my life and what you've said to me over these last three weeks. But now my response is, now how do I serve others better because of what you've done inside of me during this process. So, man, I love you guys. So grateful for so many of you that have been a part of this. I pray God has spoken to you. But again, my prayer is that this would be a catalyst and not an event. All right, so here's what I want you to do before you get up from wherever you are this morning. I want you to write down some next steps. I want you to process back through. Maybe you would take some, some serious time to walk back through the journal, walk back through things that God has said to you over 21 days and think of it from the aspect of how do I push in to heal myself, God, but with the purpose of not just trying to be holy, but with the purpose of being more who you've called me to be so that I can reach the unchurched and the prodigals in the great commission that you have given us. So, God, we commit these 21 days to you. We have done our best to um, push in and draw closer to you and to your heart. But God, we understand it's really not about us. It's, it's about your great commission. It's about the calling that you have in our lives to turn around and serve and love others. So would you give us eyes and wisdom and discernment to understand how do we deal with the unchurched in our lives? And how do we deal with the prodigals? And give us wisdom, God. Give us, give us a balance of, of mercy and justice. Give us an understanding of the difference between a hand out and a hand up. Uh, take away the calluses, God. We have calluses in our heart 
for maybe being used and abused and maybe having taken someone in and they did it all over again. God, would you heal us, guide us, protect us, but send us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you guys again for participating in 21 days and I'll see you in church this morning.